Okay, evening everybody. It's the November meeting. Cameras on, don't forget. Um, any apologies? Uh, yes, apologies from um, Edward Badman and Steve George. She's going to stay by me. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, we, we've seen more. Thank, Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, nothing from county, nothing from district. So, any declarations of interest? This could be a good one. <clears throat> uh, minutes, we have your minutes. The last lot. Mm -hmm. We have Just to say, Chairman, that following our last meeting, we did write a letter to the, well, you wrote a letter to the Chairman of the uh, Political Committee, um, thanking them for coming to the meeting and asking them if they will reconsider their decision to lock the gates. You, you did all get excited, didn't you? Yeah. Didn't you? No. I thought you were excited about it. Yeah. No idea was. Oh, I'm sorry about that, guys. The idea was you all had sight of it, and if you had a contribution, we want you to comment. Uh, it's Alec drafted it. Sorry about that. Um, but Alec Knight drafted it. It was me trying to do anything to it. We've been gilding the lily, so I just signed it. left it well alone and just signed it. Um, but basically, um, well, Alec, you wrote it. Can you remember word for word? Thank you for attending the meeting, explaining the rationale behind your decision to lock the gates. The parish council have asked me to write to you to. Um, express their regret at that decision and ask you to reconsider it. Exactly. Something we, like that. We haven't heard anything. We have, no, we have sent off about 10 days ago. Okay, well, just, just to say, I actually went today to pick up and of course it's shut, so they're using the lane. It is so dangerous. It is now really dangerous. A big tractor came up while we were waiting on the lane and there was the one, so we're... If you, if you, there's the car park. I believe it. Yeah, but there, and then there's that one. So we're waiting up here, and the kids are running across this road, and the tractor came up, and he came up full pelt. Um, and um, it, 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 you know, the kids were running across the road. I'll tell you what, it's a good place to show Yeah. Good point, well made. Thank you very much. Um, we'll have to box the place. Yeah. Uh, car park lighting. Yes, um, I've had a word with our electrician who's coming in, supposed to be started this week doing the rewiring, but he hasn't. He's tied up with something else, and he's going to give me a price now for the low level lighting in the footpath. But I'm still, I'm still waiting for that. So um, Steve was hopefully going to do something. He sent me an update this morning saying he's meeting the new tra traffic engineers tomorrow morning, Lady yeah. Catherine, somebody I call yeah. the and then we'll walk around the village uh, together with Polly. Um, so that's it. That's <coughs> um, um, uh, no, Steve, so we won't have any following matters. Well, well, that's what it was. Right. Okay. He's meeting the engineers tomorrow, yeah. Discuss the white line in all that. He was going to have a think about cameras, wasn't he? That's coming in later on. That's coming in later on, yeah. Right, financial matters. All the books balance again, Chairman, this month. Um, I'd like to ask two numbers to sign. I'd be very grateful. Ricky and Mike. Or a pen. Of course. Yeah. Not an office. And can I introduce uh, Kirsten? Kirsten Rushby. Rushby. We come as we come as a pair. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and Hannah and Hannah Burridge. Yeah. Um, we have um, a charity called Community Council Royal Somerset. <coughs> um, 
been going, sorry, I just been going for I believe just over 90 years now. So we have a long established um, relationship with Somerset and the services that we've been offered uh, offering over the over the decades. Um, so we ended, uh, the point of attending this meeting is to give you a brief overview of the different services that we offer and a more kind of detailed service of my well, of my work and of Hannah's. Um, I am a village agent. And at this table, how many of you have heard or come in contact or aware of village agents? So you all yeah. fairly kind of. So I, I won't go into much detail now because I really don't take up any more of your time. And I think what Hannah is doing is kind of new and, and possibly therefore if you know what I do. No, we don't know what yeah. you do. We've heard of the village agent, but we actually don't know what the village agent does. Right, okay, so my role is to, I am part funded by the lottery and part funded by um, Axbridge and Wedmore GPs, as well as the Cheddar GPs. I get referrals from a range of sources, including GPs, uh, professional therapists, adult social care, um, and uh, a good percentage of self-referrals as well. Um, I tend to be work with, working with people that have, are facing difficulties in their life, uh, whether that's through ill health, or lack of employment, or housing, or financial, and I go in there and I support these people on an individual basis to um, access the right type of services and support them with that access as well, because that's quite often an issue. Um, uh, currently, I reckon I probably have about 20 clients that I'm currently working with in this in the Redmore area, and I have two of my most complex clients um, work in this area as well. I think actually two of the most complex clients as well. So um, uh, affluence doesn't necessarily mean there's not a need in the community. Um, I've got some. I've got some information here that I can give out to you. Now these I normally um, give to my clients, so you can take one if you want. I don't read on the back, it says what I do, and it also says the areas that I cover, and it'll give you an idea of just how wide my patch is. Please keep them if you want, and if you know somebody that you'd like to pass that on to. And then I've got some cards here that I can give out, and if you just if you just keep these for your information kind of long term, that's okay. So I sort of pass these around. Yeah, is that okay? okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If I pass these this way, is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> um, we'll hand these out at the end of the meeting. So. That's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, I work with a range of different services. So I work with quite often with micro providers, integrated rehabilitation teams, um, a huge range of individual fire service. It just depends really, housing, just depends really on what the issues are. Um, the, the process usually involves me going in contact or they get in contact with me. I have a telephone conversation which lasts anything from 10 minutes to half an hour, sometimes a little bit longer to just go feel the, the issues. And then I go out and do a visit. And these visits can take anywhere between an hour and two hours. I spend quite a bit of time with them on the initial visit, so I get a really good picture and idea of the, of the situations that they're facing. And I often give them time to really unpick what's going on. And also I identify, I often identify other issues going on that they may not have initially presented with. Um, and then I go away and do the background work, make the referrals, make the telephone calls, and usually, if it's not too complicated, I will get back to them with a telephone call a couple of weeks later just to confirm that everything that we've discussed has gone through, that they've received, you know, referrals have been processed, or that some of these contacts come from another agency. On more complex case ones, obviously, I will have to go out and do follow-up visits and maybe co coordinate multidisciplinary meetings or... Uh, yeah, a whole range of, uh, of issues. Um, what I am finding more and more though is that as we, services are being rolled back, and this is the statutory services, so talking police, adult social care, um, education, <laughs> mental health is a massive one. Um, that they are expecting, and I don't, and I say that word with all. With all, with, with total understanding of what that means, 
police, I was looking at mental health, are expecting communities to pick up those pieces. And they're quite often coming to village agents, people like myself, and saying, can you find, we're not going to do this anymore. Um, I, as I mentioned, I've got two of my more, most complex cases at the moment, and one of which I am engaging with a neighbour and um, some of his contacts and the church to support this, um, the, 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 the couple involved. And then I have another case as well where I am currently, I have approached uh, Cheddar Lions and the Rotary and I'm waiting for both organisations to get back to me. Uh, I spoke to Rod, um, who I keep calling Chris. It's my wife. And for some <laughs> unknown reason, it's just logged in my brain. Yeah, yeah. so for Rod, forever known as his wife, Chris, by the village agent. Um, um, I spoke briefly to, to Rod about this, um, um, and I haven't had any, and they've not come back. But I have a client, fairly local to this area, with a hoarding issue, and I am trying to find volunteers at the moment to help this gentleman. He, um, he has been involved in mental health services, but is in a place at the moment where he's very kind of willing to address the problem. He does care for a partner that has disabilities, but at the moment there is no caring agency or no other professional that will go into the dwelling to provide any additional support. So you can see we've got a bit of a catch-22 situation going on here. And, um, and I did speak to Ron and sort of say, you know, would it be possible to bring this up in this meeting to maybe ask whether you can have any contacts yourselves that might be willing to basically come and knock in and help clear this house out. It's not, it's a, it's a dirty job, but someone's got to do it. I've been saying that for decades. <coughs> um, when, sorry, when, when are you looking to, to do it? As soon as possible. The thing <coughs> that I've used with the gentleman is that wouldn't it be nice to be able to have Christmas dinner in your kitchen? Because at the moment, you can't even get to the sink. Never mind. Sit at the table. Yeah, it's just, you know. Like you know. Um, I don't. I'm really careful about back room too much. Yeah, so he was exactly actually a very private room. person. Sorry. 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 Neil just said to me, someone who might be able to help. I don't think it's appropriate. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I mean, I, I, I you know, you should all have my contact by the end of this meeting. And if any of you can think of anybody that might be willing, there is a. There's some heavy duty work to do and there's also some cleaning to do, so there is a combination of activities. It's because it's I mean in fairness it's a combination of things. It's a it's a community, um, you know, it's a shame that this gentleman's got into the situation he has, it's due to his mental health needs, and it's a shame that we don't have the services to support this gentleman anymore, but there just isn't any other way other than looking at the community at this present time with services as, as they are. Um, and that, and that, if I'm fair, is a, is my day to day 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 to day job, and you know. Um, so it's just you on your own, really. You on? Uh, well, yeah. There's a there's a team of village agents. So all across Somerset, we have currently about 15 village agents, and we're trying to increase that number. Um, the a lot of GP surgeries in our funding or co-funding village agent posts. The majority of the funding is from big lotteries and parish councils have funded their own village agents, they have a dedicated village agent. Um, and that's something else that we're looking into exploring more, especially in areas we don't cover, because we often get calls from those areas saying, can you help them? You know, we haven't got the staff or the funding to do so. And the village agents do everything from supporting community groups getting off the ground. You know, if there's lunch clubs for the elderly, it's, it's particularly looking at those vulnerable and isolated people that really don't have the means to access information, and that's where the village agents are invaluable. And in the last year alone, our village agents have saved Somerset two and a half million pounds just from taking referrals off the GP's backs. And overall, our overall saving of about five million pounds just for these 15 individuals that go into homes across Somerset and just yeah, help just with awesome. um, po fuel poverty, you know, if someone can't afford oil, um, we've got an emergency grant fund that we can access and get them food, get them oil, so no one's 
you know, left without. And it's just getting in the door to a lot of these people because a lot of people are very proud and don't, you know, don't say I need help. But the GPs can sort of spot people <coughs> if you like and put them our village agents' way. So this is, you know, one example of many, many. Mm -hmm. Community transport is another big issue across Somerset. So. Village agents have been very heavily involved in that. On our website, there's all the listings of all the VAs, but um, person carries covers the. Um, this I get such an email yeah. as well. You know, you're the list where I, where I, where I cover. Yes. Yeah, What's the um, <coughs> likelihood that Wedmore Parish Council will be asked to support, as in financially, a, an agent? I know currently you're being funded by Cheddar and the and the doctors. Is that is that something that's going to because we'll have to look at that for yeah, future finance we've, meetings and stuff. We've so. had brief discussions, and this is very sort of not official at all. We're looking to the future, obviously, when the big lottery funding runs out, because it's become such a vital service across Somerset. If we cannot guarantee the funding in the future, we have to look at other ways to raise that funding. So we're looking at sort of crowdfunding methods across Somerset, and we worked out there's you know so many hundred parish councils across the county. If each council could put in, say, £300 annually, that could support the service in no end. And it's not a massive amount of money, and it's up to each parish council how much they can contribute. But really, it's some, and that's something we'll probably be looking at next year. It's nothing, that's an imminent thing. But if they did, and every parish council contributed, the coverage we could do would be phenomenal, and then people we could help. Just, just to say, we run a Tuesday club here. Oh yes, I have been asked. And um, it, it would be good to have these leaflets and cards yes. available for our clients. I only heard about this a couple, couple of weeks ago, yeah. Yeah. But, and so I wasn't, I wasn't aware of it. I mean, my patch is really vast. So I go from Ashcott yeah. to East Huntsville all the way up to Shipham. So. Yeah. yeah, we have a, a Tuesday yeah. club, but we, we're now full. We've got 25 mm -hmm. and... Um, we've got people coming from Cheddar, mm. um, but that's fine. You know, not that's absolutely fine because we did it, it dropped down. We only had about 14, mm. 15, and we were actively looking to, yeah. you know, to boost it and to get more people coming. And yeah. mm. um, we're all going out for lunch next on the 28th to, to mm. the garden centre and, mm -hmm. and having, and they're having a Christmas lunch in December and. Mm. It, it is, yeah. you know, they really do enjoy yeah. it, yeah. and it's good yeah. fun because everybody else enjoys it, all the volunteers do. Yeah. But it, there again, is it takes about 30 volunteers yeah. to do it that every fun. week. Yeah. It's, it's, and it very much relies on that yeah. kind of support. Yeah. There is a fund called Transform Aging, I don't know if you've heard of that, and it's a national scheme that's being rolled out at the moment, um, and Somerset have been chosen as one of the sort of spearheaders of the lack of the scheme. Um, there are some funding available within that, and, and it's about you know ageing in, in a world where a lot of people are staying older for longer. You know, we're yeah. all yeah. living longer well, these days, and it's about how you want to live in older yeah. you know in older years, and, and how what, what people want you know from their retirement years as well. I'm really making there's some social enterprise elements where people are coming up with inventions and creations and things that will help people. And then there's the social aspect of it, of what do people want. And I think that's more important in a way because it is those elements that are so crucial. Yeah, people. you could, if you get, ever get a chance, come and visit it. Well, I will, I will. Um, I tend to be quite busy on Tuesday because I'm tend to be over next bridge and I know that my calendar has been quite full over the last couple of weeks, um, particularly this week. <laughs> um, but my intention is to definitely come over. Um, but I'm mindful as well that you are full at the moment, and that you know, there'll only be referrals that will come from me. <laughs> as I've been. Well, we yeah we are, but but you know it's we can say we're full, but we can always squeeze in another one. Yeah, that's I really appreciate that, and I will, and, and I'm mindful of not <clears throat> overloading some of the really kind of precious. Uh, uh, fantastic community groups that we've got out there as well. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if you're aware that we've also got sort of singing in the brain, singing for the brain coming mm -hmm. into Axbridge as well, which will be alternate weeks from mm -hmm. the Axbridge one. So that will be a new service. Sorry? Do you have every week on a Tuesday? I, I thought it was every fortnight, and then and then they were going to alternate them so that it makes they don't clash. I think that was what I read in the email. Mm -hmm. so. Can I ask, do you get most of the referrals from the doctor? 
No, it's a very mixed bag, actually. Um, I'd say it's about 50-50. I mean, I'm surprised at how many self-referrals I get, and I think that's just generally word of mouth. I've heard I've got things in newsletters and stuff like that, articles in newsletters. And also a lot about um, community agents as well now, and they take their referrals. Community, oh, community agents, so to complement the village agents, mm -hmm. they only take referrals from GPs in adult social care, so they'll be dealing with that element of um, um, to take some pressure off the village agents, but there's a lot of costs on the as well. And then the third strand, so you've got the village agents, the community agents, which are sort of take more complex, and then the third strand is the carers agents, which we've only mm -hmm. just introduced, <clears throat> and they are specifically for people that are caring for partners, wives, mm -hmm. husbands, children, um, with sort of disabilities or, or long-term health needs. So we're looking at really sort of making sure that we target the support that we do quite accurately. Yeah. And, and we, we, um, you might have heard of Compass Carers before, so they had the contract previously and we've taken on that contract now, so it's called Sunset Carers Service. And um, yeah, that, that they've just been in post about a month. Um, the website sunsetcarers.org, so all that, you know, our local um, you, you have a one for this patch if you like, so everyone's got a local her, her name is Jackie and I have her, her details if you want that. What I also have as well, which I'll hand out now, is a kind of village agent roadshow, but all, that will, this, will, which is in Bridgewater, which is the nearest one for this area. Um, <coughs> if, you know, the great you can help promote this. Um, the idea being that, um, that you would get to sort of find out about all these new services that we have. So it's quite, a, quite an interesting time for our organisation. There's a lot of development going on. <coughs> and, um, and, and a lot of new services for people to get their heads around, really. So if I can... You want us to, to promote you? Well, um, promote, uh, support, refer as well. <coughs> I think that's what I'm. I mean, in the short period that I've been working and doing this role, I'm seeing more and more as people, GPs, adult social care, just turning around and going, well, "Can you just see if there's somebody in the community can that can help with this?" <laughs> okay. And I was very successful last week. I managed to get um, a lady with severe anxiety that won't leave her home and therefore has got health issues and has not been able to attend the hospital or any GP appointments for the last two years and these health issues have built up and I managed to find a volunteer for within 24 hours to take her to these appointments. So finally this lady will be able to access the health services that she needs and hopefully having a dedicated volunteer that she can build a relationship with this volunteer will also sort of build up her self-esteem and her confidence and maybe over a little bit, you know, with the volunteer and I talked about maybe over six months time, and, you know, we could look at encouraging her to go and engage in, in sort of wider activities as well. Do you have a reservoir of people like that? Yes, I'll talk to you about it. No, I mean, the reason I was, it was one of my close best friends that took on that role, <laughs> and that was the only reason that I, my family don't live anywhere near me, and there's a reason why that is. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think it would be helpful to explain about the micro providers who aren't volunteers? Yeah. You know, yeah. Just so the other, I mentioned earlier on about micro providers. So the other, we don't manage the service, but we draw on them very heavily. And more and more in our or in our role, we're finding that individuals within the our communities are relying them more heavily as a social care is rolled back and harder to access. So my providers tend to be, in my experience, ex-nurses, uh, ex-nursing assistants, ex-health care workers, health care workers, mental health workers, a whole ream of people with a social care background. Uh, they become sole traders, so they you know, have a business in their own right, and they do their own, their own um, accounting, and, you know. and um, they they provide services to individuals in the community from anything from sort of companionship right through to palliative care. So that includes things like shopping, um, uh, taking to appointments, taking to appointments, helping them in that bed in the morning, getting them to hairdressers. It's just a huge range of people. The, what the issue is, though, is that you know the concern is that sometimes the only barriers that quite often is 
client that I was working with today, she said that she only has a spare £20 a week, which would really only give her enough time for one and a half hours a week of a micro provider. So they do charge, and they charge anywhere between £12 and £16. So this is, in a sense, private healthcare. Um, the advantages of it is it's very much tailored to the individual person, and they they, the individual person, the, the, the one that needs the care, kind of dictates the shape of that service, when it occurs, who it is with, what times, and what goes on. So that, whereas in the past you may have had um, somebody come in and say, oh, we've been told to you, we've got to get you out of bed at this time in the morning, you need to get in the bath, and then you need to, I need to be out here in 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. This is a lot more um, flexible um, and it also means that you're working with the same individual for, or well, hopefully for the duration of the care need, and that you can build up quite a positive relationship with that person, and they understand, oh, you know, how your how your house works, that you like your shoes to be taken off, that you like your tea in, cer in a certain way, and all that, you know, the the the, the sort of personal, the added value stuff that you would not necessarily get with some of the bigger providers, the way you've got different individuals coming in and out of the house. So they, at the moment, are a huge army of people. Um, I looked at a micro, the microfiber list today, and it's on a spreadsheet, and I think you've probably got about 10, 10 people on each sheet, and it's up to 41 sheets now. So there's over 400 microfibers working across Somerset, I think, at a rough estimate. So there are a, a lot of changes going on in terms of how we support our communities or how our community, what more vulnerable members of our communities are being supported. You, so, that, so I, I, Hannah has, has a very different role from I do, so it'd be really nice if, I could, if there's still time for Hannah to have an opportunity. Keep it going, yeah. <laughs> um, So the other half of the business, if you like, so we've got our carers, community, village agents is the community involvement team and we work closely with community groups, parish councils to um, a lot of the time it's finding, um, creating the housing needs survey so you can access the seal money that comes from the building. Um, if it's section 106 there's different routes into it. I can't remember off the top of my head what what Sedgemore has signed up for. I think there's a seal agreement. Well, there? Yeah. 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 Um, and with all the new houses actually being planned around without having housing needs surveys and your neighbourhood plans, it's getting, uh, you're not in the local planning you know, legislation, you're not there to access the civil money, so it's whether you've got those in place to, to actually access the funds, and it's a lot more money from the civil money, section 106 as well, from buildings, so that's good. And what we do is provide the consultancy side of it, so we would um, do all the um, consultation with communities, gather that evidence, write the report of need, and, and then that becomes part of local planning legislation. So it's very important work. We're doing the, the neighbourhood with yeah. the local plan at the moment, mm. and we've got a group doing that. And mm. obviously, if we get our neighbourhood plan through, then we will get a yes. bigger slice of this. That's it, yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah. Some people like, don't need... Um, so much I'll help with that. It's more on the consultancy side that you know for getting the consultations in, and the way it gets funded and our time gets funded, if you like, is through um, awards for all. So we would sort of, you're a member of CCS, Welcome More Parish Council Beef, so you're on a discounted rate of thirty-four pounds an hour, and it's. We, we sort of go for the water all funding that funds our time to support you. So actually, it's at no cost to you. We make sure we get that funding in place, to, you know, for whatever work we do with you. So there's always means and ways of covering our work within your bigger projects, if you like. So it keeps the costs right down across the board. And obviously, other other projects we do is help you find funding for um for projects that you've got going. I spoke to Polly briefly about the park behind the post office. My background was in, I worked for local authorities um, when we had the Play Builder Fund, so I managed a two and a half million pound pot that developed parks across a borough. So I've got a lot of experience with not only building parks, but also in finding funds to match funds and, and pull it in, and also how to consult properly with the children as well. So I worked within children's services at the time. But, you know, I'm getting a very meaningful um, report on what you need, rather than 
you know, from a very adult perspective, it's easy to say, oh, it's just swimming as like, da 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 But there's, there's ways of doing it, and there's ways of asking as well. That it's not enough to say, draw a piece of paper what you want, because a kid hasn't got the scope to know what's out there and what could be an amazing play space. So, and what's inclusive, and you can make it natural and fun, and, you know, all sorts. But, um, yeah, and, you know, support for finding funding like that. And, um, you know, project management as well. So... And then my other hat is CCS is graphic design and marketing, so I do website and do, yeah. But again, that's the service that I can offer if it's needed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got them to pass on? All right. So we're passing yes, them. Yeah, that's all my contact details on. Do we have any questions for these two ladies? No, we'll be able to inform it. I'm really glad you came. Thank you. I mean, please don't hesitate to kind of contact us yeah. on an individual basis. And certainly if you have any way of any volunteers or anybody mm. that's willing. I mean, it's a huge ask, but I wouldn't ask it if I didn't need it. It's not a want. It's, yeah, it's a significant difference. So if somebody were to volunteer, say, to help this, this just particular person with their clearing out, you know, obviously would, would you be there with another professional or would you be no, there with just the you and that, me? No, I think the way that I would want to work it is because he has got a back mental health needs and although when I went to visit him he was in a really good place, quite happy to show me around, he, said, he talked, he, the way that he reflected on his own situation I felt was very healthy if that could be so he said like, you know I'm really embarrassed by what's going on really want to be able to address this, I just don't really know where to start on, you know. And he, and he was saying, you know, but his, as with many hoarders, they're quite obsessed with recycling. So there was a conversation about, well, it's very difficult to recycle if you can't get to your sink. So we need to be really quite, we need to get to a certain point where you can recycle effectively. I felt the conversation was really very positive and I came along and I really, actually I really enjoyed his company. I really enjoyed the gentleman's company. Um, I did meet his partner. Um, I think what I would want to do is, if I, I think realistically we would ideally need sort of three, maybe four, because I don't want to overload the gentleman and it's not a big property. Um, but it does need a kind of a big push of almost like a day to get a lot of the stuff out and then we can start kind of cleaning and it needs to be, you need to see that difference. Um, when I said, oh, well, I think this is how it might, or I might be able to make it work for you, you kind of like winced when I said about three or four people turning up. But I, so I, and I appreciate that. There was a huge pride, and I think it's about sort of if you put yourself into your, you know, we've all made mistakes in our lives. Mm -hmm. But quite often we've managed to do it very quietly, and nobody else has really noticed that much. <laughs> but when you have to engage with strangers, and they're kind of coming in, then, then it becomes a really personal thing. So it's about treading very carefully with this guy. And so I think what I would want to do is to take maybe one of the volunteers up to meet him and then then maybe gradually sort of build that up. But, um, well, I, I, I will volunteer for this one because my background is mental health nursing, so I've heard some of that. <laughs> well, I don't think it's not a bit fair or not but, really. Is. No, but, you know, amongst the group here, I've probably got, you know, a background in it. Really so, um, I, I can give you a day. Mm. Okay, I can't do it open ended, but I can certainly give you a day. Mm. So if really that care. starts the ball rolling, I'll do that. Yeah. Thank you. And I, and I would be there. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know how much I can be there without getting my because I'm not supposed to do any of the delivery mm. stuff, but I mm. think I might be able to. Well, I think well, there's need to hold the point hand as well. Yeah, there's other people involved. And, and yeah. I wouldn't, you know, what we don't want to do is be too gung ho and then. Yeah, yeah it'd be very overwhelming if four strangers turn up and start moving stuff yeah. out. So, yeah. so why, why don't you and I go out and meet the gentleman so he knows one person yeah. at least? And that's what I was thinking yeah. of doing. And then yeah. you can. Yeah. Feedback and we can yeah. make a plan, but it needs to be a plan. But yeah. when I turned up there, he. Before, when I got to the gate, I mean, he came out to me when I was parking. And then when we got to the gate, he said, do you want to go to the cafe down the road? And I was like, no, it's okay. I, you know, I'm, happy, I'm fine here. So he, 
you know, you, you can understand. I mean, I'm sure you can understand, but I think it would make a massive difference. I also need to sort of just go back to him and keep him informed where yeah. we're up to. He did say, and I did get his permission to bring it up in the meeting, but he did say, I'm really concerned that he's going to talk about this in the pub. So please, I'm please, I'm just ask that one thing. Um, I'm sure you wouldn't anyway, but I just want to, you know, that's how deep his pride is, yeah. I think, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Just thank you. Quick, quick question. If we're using volunteers, uh, if they're not, as it were, officially trained, and there's three cases in newspapers today of people who've made mistakes um, with people who have either mental health mm. difficulties or caring um, and they you know the, the, the money involved in suing is unbelievable I just wondered what they if somebody went in and, and helped wherever and mm. to get rid of some stuff and then somebody decided that something went how is the cover what would the cover be on that I think we need to, that's the conversation that we would have initially with the gentleman and understanding that, you know, there is no opportunity for litigation if something does go wrong. And likewise, as a volunteer, I mean, and underneath that umbrella, you know, that sort of very, I guess, gentleman's agreement, which I'm sure, you know, we also have our own insurance policies. And we do, and we work closely with Spark and engage with the volunteer sector within Somerset. So they've got policies in place that we can use yeah. and tailgate yeah. on if you like. We work very closely with them. So even if it means um, becoming a member of one of these organisations for free, it becomes, you know, you've got the backup then of, of the voluntary yeah. sector sort of services. And I mean, we? it's, we have to be yeah. Well, it's a good point. Yeah. And, yeah. You no, and you have to be yeah. yeah. well. yeah. 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 severely mentally handicapped. And um, he was, he's now in care. Mm. Uh, but um, you know, the the when he went with a share for family, mm. um, the setup of that was really very complicated and very long. Mm. Um, and we had, were just sharing him, as it were, mm. the care. It was wonderful. The whole thing was absolutely it lasted for thirty seven years. But it was you know it was wonderful. But every so often there was this review of you know if they left the gate open. Who was responsible if, yeah. they, if something went missing from the house? Mm. Who was responsible? It was, yeah. it, you know, I just wondered how. Yeah, it's a kind of risk assessment that you need to do. Yeah. 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 And I think that that's why it'd be great. I mean, I'm really grateful for Judy to, to volunteer yeah. that. And we can both go up together yeah. and, 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 and that, make that assessment. Yeah, yeah quite often. get DBS clearances as well for someone that's doing it long term as people as well. Sure. Yeah. You know. I mean, I. I doubt that that, I mean, cause yeah, what yeah. I would like is to do well, in my head, it's just a couple of days of a hard draft and then yeah. I will keep, mm. and then what I think I would try and do is find somebody to, like a micro to go in once a week and make sure they're okay, maybe support them with just kind of cleaning and tidying, you know, just that follow up mm. and make sure it just doesn't deteriorate again. So that is in my head how it looks. Whether it comes, to whether it actually turns out that way, I don't know, and I'm quite happy to be flexible. But I mean, quite often as village agents, we are just presented with these quite complex problems and to, to try and find solutions to them. Sorry, Liz. So um, that's fine. Yeah, you know, we've got a little bit more work to do yet. Thank yeah. you very much for your time and coming in and talking to us. Yeah. Thank you so much. No, 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 it's okay. And just from Blackford Park perspective, because obviously I'm my daughter's at Hugh Sexy, so I completely sympathise with. <laughs> Luckily, she just started getting the bus, but when my middle one goes up next year, we're back to the loop or the park situation. Mm. Has, has it been tackled from an accessibility point of view in terms of disabled access to the park? Because if it's blocking access, and is there a right of way within the There's no way to get through the disabled access. So that might be one angle. And also, is there a right of um, access in the deeds to the park across the land? Oh, we don't know if it's in the deeds. We haven't looked at the deeds yet. But they uh, reported um, that the, the uh, committee came last month mm. and said that they found a letter from 1983 or 1984 um, where they where there was a, a gate put into the swing park, and they said that one of the conditions that they agreed to when that gate was put in was that there was going to be access permitted to the swing park. Mm. And there was some caveat on that, provided it didn't interfere with the 
activities in the village hall, something mm. like that. I haven't seen the video yet, but I'm mm. waiting for the video to come out so I can yeah. exactly what I say. But uh, yeah, that's certainly an issue because what they've done, of course, is they've closed off access not only to the school mums, mm. but also to everybody who wants to use the park, yeah. um, able-bodied or disabled. That's it. Um, and it seems to be in breach of, of an agreement, a prior agreement. Mm. That, that was my topic. I knew yeah. that's the only thing I thought Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. You've got my telephone number. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank really, you. really, really, really yeah. appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Um, what are the issues in the village? Uh, it was just a quick one, really. Well, I was hoping maybe to have more said about this, but um, obviously, Steve Huxtable said uh, a few meetings ago that basically the um, council won't um, clean out any gutter drains unless we specify. Um, and is it something that we ought to be looking at to for the future, if not starting now? Um, this is really water coming past your house, isn't there? All down, it goes down your Dando's or down Billings Hill yeah. straight into the village. Um, but, but they cleared that. They, have they cleared it now yeah. since um, yeah, but, yeah, they did it not too long ago. And it's bump again. Yeah, but this is because he said there's a there's a route that they do yeah. regularly and then there's some that they do. But exactly, this is what I mean. And mm. it's, he said that if there was some sites that we specified that were an issue, um, he could then get that on a rotor, and then if there was then one-offs or whatever, we then thought a certain area might require once a year or twice a year, something like that. Um, then, but without us sort of having a mindful <coughs> act, this is one of those things we can all sit here now, and we're not going to remember where we <coughs> But when you drive around the village, you think, oh, that drain's bubbling up, or there's a lot of water holding here, or something like that. Um, like I said, it's more probably for another meeting, or even a month or two months' time, that like we can start getting an yeah, idea, sounds like we need. idea together because yeah. I mean, basically it's going to there's cutbacks and cutbacks coming and it's not going to get done. No. So um, are you going, if we see anything, will yeah. we report it to you? I think you might get it, because uh, I've seen several already, but right. like you say, you, if you drive past it and then 20 minutes later something else happens, you forget. So unless you yeah. have multiple people or someone, at least there's a list of some sort, yeah. Mm. Okay, I did to report issue this morning uh, about the brook which got a blockage under Guildhall Lane. It goes under the road. There. Two ladies who cut their banks back, so the, the place is full of rubbish. And they, so I reported that through this morning to uh, Mike Dunnett, so mm -hmm. who took side of that. I mean, because it's, it's one of those things that's never caused an issue, but back yeah. 18 months ago when we they everyone walked the brook, it was noticed that there's a gutter drain at the bottom of Sand Hill that's been overrunning for 10, 15 years probably. Um, it's only going 20 yards down the road, but if the next drain blocks and it comes across the road, you have a freeze, it's, it, it's progressive, isn't it? It can't be doing the road any good. And actually now the one at the top of the... No, and the one at the top response to it. Yeah, and the one at the top of the hill is um, now it started running down, completely downhill from I don't know where at the moment. So yeah. if everybody yeah, can have a little look, I'm going to go around yeah. and see what like say, it's going to yeah, it, it won't be a month, two month thing. Issue. It's not a. Mm. It's only when it rains, and luckily at the moment we have a lot of rain. But no. No. if we don't move with it, it'll be yeah. another thing that'll be next well. September. And <laughs> we'll be raising it. Yeah. So when we notice it, it's no Rod. Is that what we're meant to do? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. When we notice these things, we, we just tell Rod. Yeah. And yes. then he'll make a note of it. Well, give, give it to Ricky, because Ricky's going to collate them. Yeah, yeah, I don't Ricky? Mind. Yeah, I'll give you emails. Yeah, it's always on. Yeah. 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 Big message. I'll it's probably not get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, mate. Please, nice. Right. <laughs> um, name of the plan? Yes, it, yeah. Um, just to say, everything's going ahead for uh, a week on Friday. Um, I hope you've all had your. Leaflets, um, with um, I mean, really, the, all most of the things we've been doing has been leading up to this, um, and um, you know, we're also, as you notice, there's going to be sessions in here as well, so we're trying to make it more accessible for everybody so that the people that are working, this is Saturday. 
there's one in the evening, there's one in the morning, there's, you know, there's one in the afternoon, and so we're just trying to make it more accessible. And, um, and advertise it as much as possible, so... Well done, you. Yeah. Everybody's supposed to have had one of these through the post. Yeah, we have one. Yeah, we have one. And you have it. And you have it. And you have it. Somebody did say it came on a Monday, which is not a good day because it comes in with all the sort of junk mail stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've got yeah. a Tuesday with the junk mail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be a thing that he gets thrown out. Yeah. Well, we had supposedly, like before, one to every household in the BS 28 mm -hmm. area. So. Pardon? Plus Pambra, wouldn't it? Yeah, plus Pambra. Yeah. It's on both sides of the paper and it's also a laminated, isn't it? I mean, it's a very yeah, impressive we've, piece of practice. We've right? got one, yeah, and we've got, we've got one of them, you know, there are yeah, signs up around the village. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if anybody, you know of anybody who hasn't heard of it, bring it to their attention. Bring it to their <coughs> attention. I did check online before I came out. Right? Yeah, it's it not on there. <laughs> Right. Right. We have got a Facebook page, but we've only had it like three or four days. Mm. So I'm still in the process of trying to get it, to get the leaflet on the Facebook page, due to the fact that I can't do it. Sure. Yes, she, she will, and we were going to do it this mm. afternoon, but it, I didn't have time. Charlotte's been it. sharing the, both of the face, both your mm. page and the Wedmore Parish Council page. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but if it, and then I looked on the uh, Wedmore online, which is the <coughs> yeah, and it, it's not on there. This leaflet isn't on there. Okay. So I well, need maybe to, because the, oh. the chap who does the IT is being in hospital with a broken leg. No. Have I cut his film? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Have, 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 yeah. Got to get the Friday and Saturday and go in it. Can we uh, make some? Yeah. 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 Move on to the next yeah. issue and what questions happened? raised by councillors, please. Yes, what, what's happening about the, the pavement outside the George? I mean, it goes on and on. On and on. Mum and dad's involved. Yes, yeah. 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 the environmental health people are dealing with it now. It's out of our hands, it's so cool. Tessa. Tessa, it's nothing made to do. There's well, there's a bit more. Environmental health officers in Central were there last week and were taking photographs and they are they are dealing with it. I mean they've got they got the enforcement procedures. Yes, they have. But there's a dispute over who's responsible for it. I think that's the issue. Mm. Not straightforward. Mm. Any other? Uh, well Laura's not here so it won't come up, but have we actually heard anything more about the playing fields? The £20,000 we spent. No. Uh, shall I say, well, you know, you, they haven't spent that money, have they? Yeah, they have. Most, well, a fair bit, but anyway, they'll tell yeah. us. Well, I don't actually know what's happening with the £20,000, but yeah. I've spoken to Pete Brown and asked him to approach the Press Council to do another update with regard to what is going on. Because I was at Somerset playing fields, and if they don't get a move on with it, they'll lose their money that they're going to get. From the grants that they've applied for. It's as simple as that. The time I think they're, they're, yeah. they're, they are aware of what the timeline is, and they've had a few changes in the committee. So, because um, um, they raised it with me, <coughs> that's why I was going to do that one as well. But they are on the case. Mm. Okay. So, do an update for Pete Brown. So, Pete Brown, yeah. yes. yes. Uh, anything else, anybody? No. Under Issues, questions? Right, correspondence. Everything? Uh, nothing exciting on that. There's a request for a meeting about highway issues from Wookiee Parish Council. Yeah, that's been cancelled. They, they, they did suggest a date. Steve George was going to go uh, on January 8th, or something, I think it was. Um, but that meeting's now been cancelled because a lot of people can't make it, so they're going to come back with a fresh date. But uh, Steve George is intending to attend that meeting. Just out of my own interest. What were the highway issues? Uh, the same as we've got in Cheddar, in, with, with Wedmore, with uh, HGV. HGV business, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just George. up Steve's. It's just up Steve's. They've got a new big depot. 
containers put there right on the yeah, yeah, panel right. there. Right. Just to say, I didn't bring this up when I was talking about the neighbourhood plan, but I think this is the time to bring it up. There's a little, this bit about the Hinkley Sea. Yes. Did I, did, I, did I explain it? No, you didn't. Right, well, I've been talking to, with the neighbourhood plan, we are, part of the proposed objectives is to propose that we support a, a cycle path to the two sexes, to Black mm -hmm. And um, I've been speaking to Tessa because Tessa has been doing some work quietly, um, and I think that's how she wants to, to keep it, um, to um, get most of the people on board. And she's, she reckoned she's nearly there getting everybody on board. <coughs> To, um, to get a path of running through. Now, I noticed, my, well, it was brought to my attention by Charlotte, actually, because the Hinkley Point C have got what they call mitigation grants program. And it's um, grants for, if your community has been adversely affected by Hinkley C, well, I maintain our community has because the cost of our buses is rising and the amount of buses that we've got available is decreasing because they, they're paying their, their outrageous wages to the buses and the bus companies so we can't get buses at a reasonable price so we need things like cycle paths and there's a meeting in Brent Knoll next Tuesday and I'm going, and so is Tessa. <coughs> and anybody else who wants to come will be more than welcome. Um, just to sort of find out exactly and see if we should be um, approaching them for a, for a grant to go towards our cycle path. Can I fill you in a little bit as well? I've been also dealing with Tessa for the last two years. And um, what, we've, what we've been feeling is that we didn't want to go to the camp to the county council for help because they will then insist on all sorts of expensive ways of doing it and then we'll find we can't do it. So the, what we are really thinking of doing is just to ask the uh, farmers um, if they will let us have the necessary amount of space uh, just to put a, um, a fence at, the, at their side of the road. At the, in their field, there's enough, enough space for the side path and the, the cycle paths would just be a very simple thing, which would be um, laid, but laid down with this um, um, wire, wire netting is all right. And you know in these temporary car parks where, where you find this netting put down, that we just put that netting down. That, because if we, as I say, if we go to the county council on, and uh, ask for all this money, we won't get it. But if we can get it in a simple way like this, I think we could get the money locally. That just, just fills you in a little bit of what we're doing. Well, yeah. The landowners around there has been approached yet. Yeah. Yes, oh, yes, they have been approached. And as I said, very they're, positive. They're, it, it is very positive. There's one person, well, there are several people who really, really wanted to go ahead. Um, and uh, But there is just one person. But this person has been in the nigger in the wood pile for the last two years anyway. Um, way before. Yes. Um, I ever got involved with this, I held a file for this particular document, this particular exercise, and I handed it over to Tessa when she started campaigning for being an MP. And um, at that point, and we must be going back, what, five, six, seven, mm. eight years, something mm. like that, at that point, every landowner had agreed, with the exception of um, the people who owned a small orchard. Yeah. Um, and I think <coughs> they live in Western or Burnham yeah. or something like that. Um, and the proposal at that time was just to, to, to buy the small orchard. To make it work, but everybody else was in favour. I don't know if that's still the situation, is it? Well, no. I Seems mean, it, it, it might, it might well be. But she also was saying, well, we'll just go around, go around this neighbour, and um, then the neighbour will regret that he didn't actually let them come in front of him rather than go all the way around. But I mean, it's also the other side of the road that really. Um, well, there is still the school crossing issue there, isn't there? If well, no. You see, the, 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 the side that I fancy 
It's the left hand side. It's the left hand yeah. side because then a lot of those people are very. Tessa would have sway there. Pardon? Tessa would have sway there. Yeah. Mm. Well, well, yes, but she has, but it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter if she's got sway, thank goodness. But uh, there's, there's one person um, who's also got some piece of land, and, he, and he's willing for us to go along this land, and then up his field to avoid going across um, David Sisson. David Sisson will not give in, obviously. I mean, he's got a house yeah, on our road. Me, yeah. But we can go up to the, up the field, up in Levy's field, mm -hmm. and, then, and then, then hopefully. We really want to go across that little lane because yeah. if we go across that little lane, it comes out um, at just about a school. Yes, very good. Yeah. Um, and but the, 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 uh, one of the problems there apparently is that this, this man on this corner applied for um, permission to remove his caravan. That's right. And it wasn't allowed. That's right. There's yeah, some that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he, but, running, he, I was talking to the man only the other day, and he, yeah. yes, he, he well, I don't know if it's got any bearing on it at all, but... Uh, I think it has. I, I, I think it has. I don't want to be quoted, but I think this is, this is one, one of the problems. It, Were it, you then thinking of going up through Russia Lane to uh, the other one, and then down through the, through World's Way? Yes. They love pass on bolts. Yes, that's what they're talking about. Yes, that's what they're talking what's about. What's wrong with the yeah, island? Really? What's wrong with the paved road at Little Island? Really? Well, there's a paved road. It's just the same road. And it's oh, yeah, it, it, it has all, all the cars. It's on a lot of... It's... Now He's been going off for Alice for dinner of eight years. I'm trying to write down. Yeah, but well, some of these things do take that long. Mm -hmm. But really do. But you're, see, you're still coming out. I'm very worried well about it. That's that's right. Once you take it's even the worse than Little Island. Take these children away yeah, from the main cross. road, yeah. and they can't be seen when they yeah. run along there. They are not safe. No, I quite agree with you, and I think that the, the farmers sort of have to cut their hedge down so that we you can't have to see take, them. You have to take. You have to. I mean, I don't really think more. it's safe from sexes. No sexy school to sexy school with that hedge there, with children walking yeah. along there. I do not think it's safe, but the people that are around today, this has always been my argument. You must have a fence that you can see through them. against the road that's mm. safe so the children can't go on it, and the hedge must be moved back at least four to five feet to make it safe so children can be seen. Because things do happen. Mm -hmm. I think yes, maybe, you know, agree. without prolonging a, a discussion, I think that's what happened. It was the millennium, yes. 17 years ago, yes. and the plan came in, and it was the orchard which the, that's the, right. the yes, man was not going to give in, and they decided they would then go down and round and up through the other side. But that was totally out because that you, it is not observed no. by right. um, you know uh, the, the public. It, yeah. it, it would, and that was not not wet horse. No! It was, they, they put the plan because there was money available. Yeah. Mind you, it yeah. would cost a lot of money. Money, yeah. Whatever you do. Because mm -hmm. if you put that cycle, you're going to have to fence the whole distance yeah. Yeah. between yeah. the road and then the other Oops, side. Sorry, that's right. Yeah. Double fence. You've got a bank for the bank as well, yeah. 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 I mean, I, 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 it's, yeah, I mean, it would be, it would be nice would be, if we get him to be seated. If you're waiting for the pockets, that would be very useful, wouldn't it? Yeah. Right. Can we move on on this yes. one? Thank you very much. Um, anything else on the correspondence? The committee reports. Submission? <coughs> um, well, I haven't been saying, but it's been a fair bit of work done out there recently. Um, no, I ask that somebody gets that ivy off that wall, oh, yeah. Yeah, please, yeah. because otherwise it's going to come out. It will. Mm. It's on the list. Facilities, allotment, footpath, no, 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 no. Finance, general purposes. Oh, we'd like a meeting first Wednesday in December, Chairman, if it's possible. Okay. This is the 6th. The 6th of December. And, and then we can have a budget ready um, for the following format. Anything on housing, yeah? <coughs> Still no um, update, That's despite it. chasing the, the last company. Um, they've, not, they've not come back to you? No, I'm only. Um, presuming that um, they're going to be attending the neighbourhood plan yeah. meeting next week, so that but was he, their aim. 
what to come down to the British Guards. But I was hoping for some correspondence before then, actually, to. Um... <laughs> well, yeah, I think I will. Parmes, Car Park, Brook? No, nothing I um, must see. Um, fine. Mm. I should just say about the Car Park, he is looking at the camera system. He mentioned he's had a couple of firms interested in looking at it, but he's got no further to so. no, I think. Um, anything planning? We've got a meeting tonight. No, meeting on the 29th is the next meeting. We've got seven on it at the moment. Uh, representatives on committees, I will more news. We had a meeting last week um, and all is going well. I'm just disappointed we have to pay £540 in tax. Under that, everything is going alright. Play areas. Um, <coughs> predictable smashing yeah, of banks that um, they, people can't access the right, yeah, area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I imagine those will be redirected to you very shortly. Very kind of you. I should the steam. No, it's a council thing, isn't it? Planning council in the area. And mm -hmm. it's definitely have the agreement with the people. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, feels okay, I believe. Anything on. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so it's, it, you reckon it's the access is going to be the, the major issue? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, in a nutshell, the, the, the parents go there for their children playing the swing park and they pick the kids up from school. So by stopping them doing one, they stop them doing both. Uh, irrespective of the <coughs> I mean, that's the main use the swing park gets, is a school drop off time. Yeah. It's heaving with small children normally, emptying out, tumbleweed, blowing across the mud. <laughs> uh, bang. Completely empty. Is it really? Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised you didn't even have a player committee in the living room. Because no one uses it. Hmm. But they have a very nice shiny tarmac. Lovely tarmac. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sulk. Yes, and I attended the meeting. Hopefully, we've all had to sulk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, so you went back to the cluster meeting before it was good, isn't it? Well, no, the training meeting, the planning training meeting. Training. 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 Oh, training. Yes, I said it. Yes, yeah, I did. Yeah, that was really good. Thank you. 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 Chairman doesn't have anything. Just a couple of things from me, Chairman. Um, I've had an email today from County Hall asking to hold up a meeting here on the 6th of December during the afternoon to discuss the bus, 67 bus service and that day. They had a meeting here once before, so they're asking to use the council room again for that. I don't know if it's an issue. It's one or three or something. And no doubt somebody will be asked to attend anyway from here, so you can sort of key out. Um, the other thing is I went to Western College last week. Um, you know, trying to think of ways of updating our website, maybe look a bit more interesting. And they've got a very good IT department in there, and I've had a contact given to me. And I went in and spoke to their head of IT and a couple of students who were agreed to look at our website and try and come up with some, something flashy and make it more interesting. Uh, and um, they're very, very keen, these, these two students, to do it as part of their syllabus. Yeah, um, and they've, they've done several councils' websites recently. Um, so they said it's really excited, I've got some ideas. I've asked the chairman to come in with me next time for meeting. I must leave how you progress it, but it can be quite true. And it wasn't cost us anything, which is quite no, yeah. yeah. Members? Yes, just <coughs> coming from your SOLC meeting, uh -huh. planning, we are going to have, you know, we've got to go digital in the new year. Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's coming quickly. Yeah. Awesome. Now, it says some SOLC grant money is available to IT for crashes, which may be relevant for planning docs in the near future. So I wonder if, if we could... It's, it's on my list of things to do to... Oh, right. Comment off. Chairman asked me to talk about it. See if we could get, yeah. like, a... See if we are entitled to money, money. Yeah. Well, stop it. Can you just refresh my mind about the arguments about screens and TV screens? So what if we come out and pay for them? I think we did. I think we did before we thought about putting the screen up here. Film Buzz Bar, the screen up there, the screen up there. Film Buzz Bar suggested a smart TV. Smart TV, didn't it? Uh, he said that would be basic people. Yeah, he did. Um, he thought we 
longer sit. Oh, the size of this. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of interesting. So we're looking at long distances. What's the. I mean, I know we've got a pitch right now at the moment, but you could. <coughs> Potentially. Yeah. You have the people, you have the committee on one side of the table effectively, chairman at the end. You've got public participation here. Um It's not beyond that, is it? No. No. But the smart screens that you're using school, they're, they're the size of that wall, aren't they? Yeah. Mm. And they're not just white TV screens, no, they're big right. cinema screens. Yes, I mean, I saw one of the college so, last week. Because yeah. 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 the size just seemed the size of the committee, you probably would fit them along one side at the end. Whereas if you're, you're always behind someone, so if someone's participating, I suppose this is a bit of weather display, isn't it? 82 inch screens, about 7,000 pounds. Is it? Mm. Mm. There you go. Can I imagine now? Projector, 400 quid HD across the room. Mm. Yeah, so a digital projection and then they're going to be able to do that. Yeah, not technical enough to. <laughs> I'm just wondering if Salt would give us any advice as to um, what to do. Do what? Yeah. 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 Don't put it in the middle of the screen. Yeah. 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 Yeah.